Hi, I'm Sherry, and I thought I would share with you some of the pages from our history notebooking. I have shared before some of the medieval history, and I will quickly go through that as well. Basically, when it comes to notebooking, the whole idea here is to almost like bullet journal or bullet info record material that you want the student to recall and um, focus on. It's great for helping them study. It definitely is a better way to remember whatever it is you're studying history, or it can be science or geography. It can even be language arts or math. So keep that in mind. This is just a quick walkthrough. This isn't a how you do in depth or anything, but I did want to share how our history notebook is coming along. I have already done a video showing the presidential notebook, but I'm going to cover that real fast again. You can purchase things, notebooks that are already done. This is from Heart of Dakota. I'll put the link down below. And this is all the presidents. And then it's just like a half a page per president. It's high quality paper. I haven't quite figured out what pen they work on here yet. And then the student will just record whatever it is here they're asking. It's a quick almost uh, snippet of that particular president. On the ones that were more popular and or contributed to um, significant things in our history, I will have secondary notebook pages available. So I am going to have to come up with a few things more on George because I definitely want to cover him. Um, Thomas Jefferson, uh, some of the other ones like that. So as we're learning our history and we're going through our timeline, when we get to here and we're getting real close to Mr. Georgie, um, then we will go ahead and break into this and do that and just kind of cover it slowly. I also have shown these before. These are my um, presidential flashcards. And on the back, a lot of this information is already there for the student. And he can use that. And then he'll have to look up a few things. So that's a couple of ideas. So you can also, uh, most history programs now seem to be offering notebooks that you can um, purchase to go along with it. For example, All American History, this is a um, more of a textbook way of doing history, but it's really good. My daughter preferred to learn this way, and it did come with a notebook. Um, I certainly could have beefed it up, but she was like, I don't want to do a ton of it, so whatever they had was enough, but you could definitely add in more. I could probably do a review on that down the road for you if you're interested. All right, <clears throat> so I have a three ring binder. Some people just use the spiral bound, um, either wide or college ruled notebooking paper. You can use a blank art book. You can use a binder with um, the page protectors. Or in our case, I just print my material on thicker paper and then just uh, punch it with our three ring binder punch. I do like the, um, cover or the uh, binders, there we go, that have the ability to replace and put in different covers. So I've updated it to the early American. When we get done with this up to the Civil War, I will take this out, punch it, and put it in the section we just completed. And then I'll insert the new one, which will cover Civil War up into modern time. I'm gonna go ahead and put that right there to hold that down. One of the things I did do is I put some dividers. This is dated from the 100s to the 1500s AD. When we get more of the American history in here, I'm going to probably have to either buy a larger three ring or get the medieval into its own binder because there's just not going to be enough room. This was the cover that I had for the medieval. And then, like I said, when we were done, I stuck it in here. Now, when it comes to notebooking, you can just go ahead and Google notebooking free notebooking pages. Pinterest will have a ton of things and there's tons of ladies and gents out there who are very generous and provide a lot of their notebooking pages for free or for very um, small amounts. Um, Tina at Tina's Homeschool Dynamics Plus is wonderful. She has gone on a way above the call of duty and provided many really good downloads. You can also go through and learn how to put together your own planner and then she does have some things that are for sale. Now with her you do need to sign up for her newsletter and then you will get access to a secondary website where you can download more. So I don't know off the top of my head if some of these pages I'll be showing you are the secondary website or 
the one that you can just see when you go to there. So if you don't see them, that's why. Now I have created my own pages as well. So I just take some information and then just use my um, word and then create these different things. If you have a student who loves to write and will just like take some um, clip art and things like that and put them on their page, hey, let them fill in all the information they want to remember. Just maybe have some key points that you definitely want them to list on there and then let them go to town. And then there are students like this particular one of mine who would prefer not to do much writing at all. So I will provide a lot of information and then he just will fill in the material, we'll discuss it. It's not like he doesn't know it, he just does not enjoy writing. So you need to kind of, well, you need to kind of cater each student and their um, abilities into your notebooking. So you may have one student, like I said, who just can go crazy and do a lot of their own writing and put their own pictures on or draw their own things. And then you may have another student, um, especially those who are dyslexic, they do not enjoy doing a lot of writing, then you can provide a lot of information and they just fill in key points, whatever works. So I'm just going to breeze through here. Um, again, these are the Draw Right Through History, different um, projects that they he worked through for the medieval. And then we go ahead and put them in here. This is from Tina, and this is actually for a lap book, which you would slice and dice and open up, but I just kept it as a page. I do print my material on 32 pound paper. Um, I think it's best, it's definitely better quality. It prints nicely and it's sturdier for constantly going back and forth. And then um, another thing I will use are maps. I think it's important to understand where in the world you're talking. I do use mostly Homeschool in the Woods. They have two, the Old World and the U.S. maps, and they're downloadable, and then obviously it's real easy just to go on your computer, pick what you want, and print it. Or I will use Wonder Maps, and I love that one too. There are plenty of other ones, and I have tons of those resources where there are books like Uncle Josh's maps, and you just, they're blank line, and then you just print what you need as well. So there's different ways of getting. If you can't afford a more spendy, um, map set then go with the um the ones that you just have to make copies of and they aren't very expensive you can definitely find them amazon rainbow resource etc etc another way i like to bring in uh notebooking is to copy off some um, pictures that they color while i'm reading now some of my students prefer to do the majority of the reading themselves no problem but i still require them to sit with me during the main lessons and hear the story and it actually works again that's a whole nother video but i will usually have them busy so when my son was younger he would still be sitting there listening to what i was reading he would just be busy with legos or cars or drawing or things like that or just snuggling up next to me now as a teenager when i'm reading he's usually um, working on the drawings or he's coloring in some pages so where do you find these resources? Well, I purchase very inexpensive um, Dover coloring books. Um, Bella Ferrone are a little bit more expensive, but they're very beautiful books. You can download a lot of these things for free online. So you just read with their allowances for how many copies per project. And usually I don't like to choose more than four anyway. Um, and I'll have the student go through and say, I want this picture, I want that one, and then maybe there's one I definitely want in there. And so I'll print them off and set them aside. And then when we get to that section and I'm reading it, they're coloring it. Now, uh, of course, a kid could color the whole book if they're so inclined, but that's a lot of coloring. And I do like to um, be uh, money conscious, so I will not let them usually color in these books. So that's another way of finding different coloring pages. Another thing, and I talked about this in my Pirates um, video, is I'll take books and then I'll just take key points I find in the books, make notes, and then I'll go create a notebook page myself. Uh, it's a little more time consuming, not everybody's into that, but when you can't find what you're looking for, you might have to create it. And once you get used to doing it, it's not that hard. Okay, so here you go. This is kind of just a quick walkthrough. Again, there's his drawing different things I'll put in here, um, different maps I'll require, different information, like I created this for him. Just depends on your child's age and ability. Um, here he did have to fill out a little bit more info 
other things I don't expect him to. Now, another thing to keep in mind is you don't want to over notebook or overlap book a child. It's a good way to kill their love of learning. So just do the key stuff that you really feel is important or that they'd really like to include. Do not lap book or notebook everything. No, no, no. And another thing you should not do is give them all of the pages to get done in one day. So if I read this book, I, sometimes I can get these smaller books read in a whole day. Um, I would not expect him to do all the notebooking for this in one day. That's insane. He would just do maybe one or two and then come back and do it later, a day or two down the road. So I would just have all my material printed up ahead of time, take it out of a folder or a baggie, and then when we're covering something, say, hey, work on this while I'm reading to you. Now here's the Early American. This actually is just the timeline cover from Beautiful Feet Books. I just put it here so I knew what we were doing. Um, I do love Beautiful Feet, and I can do a more in-depth video on them as well. Here I had to create some different material. Here's another drawing. Uh, this one, I could not find a picture of all three of the sh uh, ships that I wanted. So I went ahead and just copied this one. It's kind of a little bit younger looking, but this is from virginia.org backslash kids. Sometimes it's okay. They don't always have to be like, you know, Rhodes Scholar type levels. Uh, this is from harringtonharmonies.com. This is a free download. I only did a few of the pages I felt kind of a key. Then I created ones again. And then we, uh, yes, he is green because my son is colorblind, so that he's assuming, I guess, is tan. We did the Iroquois Nation. Again, a lot of times I'll print on different color paper. That's just your typical paper. And then back it onto the 32 pound. And then here we are in the Pirates. This is Tina's. And then I found this on Pinterest. And then I just did this part where I wanted him to figure out who we are. And then I just had a couple diagrams for him. He glued these on and then we drew those to those. Again, it's not super complex. It's not the point to make it so ridiculously complex. You just want a key point. You want to keep it kind of light. I don't care if they're 5 or 25. Just key point it. You don't need to be um, super in-depth. The only thing we have left now is Mr. Blackbeard. He will fill in this little bit of work here on the back side of this, and then he has his island. We'll put his Jolly Roger flag in here, and I think that'll be it. And then we'll move on to the uh, colonial stuff in here. And lastly, I just wanted to point out on my Pirates unit, I showed this in the Pirate unit um, video, I have the notebooking section. You can just write this on a scrap piece of paper. Just write down the pages that you want to have, and then once you get them done, you check them off, and then you know you have them. Like I said, you put it in a folder, and it's ready to go when the time comes. So I hope these uh, tips have been helpful for you. Uh, any questions, leave them down below. Again, you can do uh, any subject, basically. But it's a great way to um, learn things without just rote and just, you know, having no connection. This really draws in the student, and I think it's one of the best ways to teach, especially history. So, um, again, questions down below. You can find the links in the description box. And until next time, folks, take care.